Today on the newscast, Israel's government is set to officially dissolve and Yair Lapid will now become interim prime minister. What do you need to know about him and why are Iranian officials admitting that Israel's shadow war against the Iranian regime is working? Find out next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It is 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, June 29th. And as you watch this, Yair Lapid may very well be Israel's new prime minister. Now, the Israeli Knesset is set to dissolve today, Wednesday, June 29th, by midnight Israel time. Now, as I am coming to you on the newscast today, that has not yet happened. Deliberations are going on right now. Various Factions within the ruling coalition are lobbying to get bills passed before the Knesset dissolves, and that is part of the holdup. There are concerns, as I come to you, that this may stretch beyond midnight into early Thursday morning. Now, the plan was to install Lapid and swear him in as interim prime minister at 12.01 a.m. Thursday morning, early Israel time, but If this thing drags on, folks, these deliberations in the Knesset, and it does not dissolve Israel's government until sometime deeper into Thursday, it looks like Lapid will then be sworn in as prime minister on Friday. But this is the inevitable outcome of the announcement last week on June 20th that Naftali Bennett, the current Israeli prime minister, and Yair Lapid, his coalition partner, made when they announced that they were dissolving Israel's coalition government. Now, this government had served for just one year in power, and as we've detailed here in the newscast, folks, it was a far-flung, ideologically diverse cabinet where you had uh, right-wingers, left-wingers, center-left people like Lapid, even an Arab Islamist party with links to the Muslim Brotherhood, all somehow cobbling together this coalition that was basically based on the premise of anyone but Bibi. Everyone in this coalition was fiercely opposed to former Israeli and perhaps future Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu. And that's essentially why they came together to force Netanyahu out of power and prevent him from assuming the prime ministership. Well, they succeeded for about a year, but then as many predicted when this government was cobbled together last year, it did eventually collapse. Essentially, these various factions and various ideological factions within this far-flung coalition just could not get along at the end of the day. Bennett and Lapid saw that eventually this thing was going to come apart and dissolve anyway, so they got ahead of it and they announced that the government was no more. Now, again, as I mentioned at the top, It goes to the Knesset, which right now is in these deliberations, and they are supposed to, and they may announce it. Uh, As I come to you, as you're watching this, you might say, hey, Stackelbeck, they announced it. Okay, again, I'm I'm coming to you 1 p.m. Eastern Time, which would be 8 p.m. in Israel, and they still have four hours before the day is done uh, to call this thing, and Lapid may indeed be sworn in by the time you watch this later on Wednesday, but that is the situation. Now, Who is Yair Lapid and what is his role now? What do I mean when I say interim prime minister? Before I get into that, two things. Number one, Naftali Bennett, the current prime minister, he announced today that he will not run in fall elections. That was pretty big news today. The second thing I want to mention, hey, if you like these breaking updates on the Middle East and beyond and how it impacts you no matter where you live, be sure to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Lapid now becomes prime minister. Some have asked in our comments over the past week, why? How does that happen? Well, as I mentioned before, Bennett and Lapid formed this coalition with an agreement that Naftali Bennett would serve for 18 months as prime minister, with Lapid as his foreign minister, and then Lapid would assume the reins as prime minister as part of this coalition agreement, and he would then become PM for 18 months as well. When they announced the dissolution of the government last week, Bennett said, hey, until new elections are held, which it looks like, by the way, will be either on October 25th or November 1st, stay tuned there for the official announcement of when Israel's fifth elections 
in under four years, hard to believe, are going to be held. It looks like late fall. But Bennett said, hey, Lapid will be the interim prime minister until elections are held. You know, a friendly gesture, I guess you would say, from Bennett and kind of keeping his end of the bargain. So Lapid, for about four or five months here, will head a caretaker government in Israel. Uh, the Knesset will not be in session during that time. So he's limited in what he can do. He can still operate diplomatically, and he apparently wants to continue to forge closer ties with Sunni Arab nations and the Abraham Accords nations, which is a good thing, no doubt, uh, but he will be hamstrung in other areas. Now, if a national security threat arises, he will surely uh, tackle it. He'll have to for the defense of Israel, and uh, the defense establishment in Israel will also be behind him there and side by side with him. And that's the big question, folks, and we'll get into this more in a minute. This is not a good time for Israel to have political instability of any kind as these threats are gathering at the doorstep in the form of the Iranian regime, a, a nuclear Iran potentially, and Iran's proxies like Hezbollah, Hamas, and the restart of Iranian nuclear talks with the U.S. and world powers. A very precarious time for Israel and the world, so you'd love to see stability right now at the top of Israel's leadership, but sadly, we don't have it. Again, this is what's called a caretaker government holding down the fort essentially until the election in late fall for the next four or five months. But these could be a very eventful four or five months for the reasons I just laid out. Iran is on the march and they may smell weakness here and want to test Yair Lapid and this caretaker government. Now, who is Yair Lapid? I would say he is on the left side, center left. He's been called a centrist. I would say center left. Um, definitely someone who is left on social and cultural issues. Uh, and also someone who has been much more uh, willing to negotiate with Palestinian leadership and who wants talks with the Palestinian Authority. Uh, so that's something else. I don't know how much he can do in that regard in his kind of lame duck role over the next few months, but he may give it a try in some capacity. That's something to watch for. He is a former TV anchor and commentator and author and correspondent as well. He's 58 years old and he heads up the Yesh Atid party. He served previously as Israel's minister of finance and he led the opposition for some time until... He formed this coalition government with Naftali Bennett, and now he will assume the reins for a few months here. Again, folks, keep the situation in your prayer. It is a very tenuous situation right now, and my concern is that the region's worst actors, led by the Iranian regime, will move or try to test this new, is this interim Israeli government, I should say. Uh, Lapid and, look, various actors across the ideological spectrum in Israel, they don't agree on much. But they have agreed across the board that Iran can never be permitted to acquire the bomb, to acquire nuclear weapons. What if Iran, over these next few months, makes some sort of announcement? Hey, we are testing a bomb. What does Lapid do? He, Like I said, he will be on the hot seat, folks. Some people think, well, he's just kind of the interim guy and he's just kind of uh, bridging the gap until elections in October. Hey, four months in the Middle East is an eternity for most people. What can happen in the world's most chaotic and volatile region in four or five months? Don't underestimate. So we're watching this very, very closely, uh, needless to say. And again, perhaps this will be a done deal by the time you watch this. Perhaps not. Perhaps it gets stretched out until Friday. But it is a, a fait accompli, as they say. Yair Lapid will be the interim prime minister. Uh, one more quick thing to mention before I go, folks. Uh, the Iranian regime, very interesting report today, the Iranian regime is essentially admitting that Israel's shadow war, the sabotage, the assassinations against Iranian Revolutionary Guards core figures, against Iran's nuclear facilities, its ballistic missile stockpiles, is working. A stunning admission where uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards has been weakened, no doubt, from this Israeli campaign, which has really ramped up in the past several weeks. Not only is the head of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Intelligence Unit. He's been cast aside. He, he's out. Uh, but there are reports that an IRGC general has been arrested for reportedly being an Israeli spy. 
Hard to see how, cre- hard to know, I should say, how credible these reports are, but they are coming fast and furious out of Iran, and Israel has done a great job of obtaining Iranian assets on the ground, flipping Iranians to spy for Israel and contribute to Israel's efforts against the Iranian regime on Iranian soil, under the noses of the Iranian regime, a string of failures, embarrassments, and black eyes for the Iranian regime. Folks, keep an eye on all of this. It is moving very rapidly. No live stream this week. Sadly, I've got some other commitments. We will be back with you for our live stream next Wednesday until tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.